you've learned the key concepts. Um, you've learned the values and ethics. We've worked through the wellness toolbox. Um, you um, have developed a daily plan of things you need to do every day. You know that there are some things you might need to do on some days that, but don't need to do every day. Um, we identified our triggers or stressors and figured out which of those wellness tools we could use if those things happen. And we have also uh, worked on identifying our early warning signs that things are just plain not right and what we wanted to do in situations like that. And so the next section of wrap is when things are breaking down. And I was just thinking about this section of wrap. And I don't know if you all know that this plan, this plan that we're developing, was actually developed years ago, um, 1997, by a group of people. And I was thinking about those people that they came to a workshop where I was teaching about all kinds of sort of wellness tools. And I think every one of those people that was there was in a situation where things were breaking down. They were people who were in and out of psych hospitals. There was one man who was so agitated that he couldn't stay still. He had to keep getting, getting up and go, going out of the room. He couldn't speak. Um, people were having to smoke all the time um, because they were so anxious and upset. They, it, it was, they were just really, really having a horrible, horrible time. They had psychiatric diagnoses or they were, had been or, or were using heavy drugs, either legal or illegal drugs. They were um, using a lot of alcohol. People were in rough shape. And they said, we need to figure out something so that we don't have to keep going through this. And they spent the time and they came up with this plan. I didn't come up with this plan. They came up with this plan. And um, when they came up with this plan, um, we talked about it a lot, and they came up with this plan. And then I went home. I wasn't, I was doing okay, but I wasn't doing as well as I do now. And I went home and I wrote one of these plans for myself. Mm -hmm. And I started using it. And I was doing so much better. And so I've just kept using it. Mm -hmm. And before these people came up with this plan, I was teaching all kinds of things. But then when I started going out and teaching people about this plan, they didn't want me to teach about the other stuff. They just wanted me to teach this plan. Mm -hmm. But the key thing was that they, all of them, things were breaking down for them. Things were really, really bad. And in the past, when things got that bad for people, usually the next step was we end up probably in a psychiatric hospital, some kind of a mental hospital, maybe in some kind of a rehab unit, maybe arrested, um, held against your will. Bad things happened. And so we were trying to help people get to the place where that didn't happen anymore. And so we came up with a crisis plan, which we'll talk about next. But what I've learned over the years is that people aren't using their crisis plans anymore because they use when things are breaking down plan and they don't need to use the crisis plan anymore. So people get to the point where things are really bad, then they turn it around by using their wellness tools. Mm -hmm. So for you, what would be a sign that things are really breaking down? Things are really, really bad. You know you're in real trouble. Notice that it might be losing housing. I notice that you're losing housing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if things are breaking down, you're going to lose your housing. Maybe not sleeping for a couple of nights. So or... you haven't been asleep at all for a couple of nights. Yeah. Okay. What would be? Uh, people that you are close to remove themselves from you. Okay, so people are staying <clears throat> away from you. Good. Oh, in my case, I just said, I mean, previously said, like, losing health insurance. Yes. So it's a really huge crisis. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, for me, I might be starting to mm -hmm. get really angry at people in my family oh, that yeah. I didn't, that for no reason. I mean, I was just, um, I was um, sitting around crying a lot, um, not being willing to call people up that I usually could easily call up. Um, not being able to figure things out, forgetting lots of stuff, forgetting appointments, um, okay. not being able to remember yeah. things. Yeah, that's right. And you know, just walking around, what don't know what to do. Yes. And also, you know, then when I think of future, nothing bright is coming. Nothing bright is coming. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. that's really a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thinking, thinking about plans to do away with myself. Yep. Uh huh. Thinking uh, about plans to do away with yourself. Or um, praying for the demise of others. <laughs> yes. yeah. oh, really wishing harm on other people. That's wishing a sign harm. of. Yeah. yeah, things are breaking down. Yep. You don't want to mm-hmm. do that. Right. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I might find myself withdrawing from social contact. Yep. Um, Don't want to talk to anybody. Right. Or another thing, I might get a notice that something is going to be shut off because I haven't paid the bill. So you haven't paid your bills and you're, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You might, I don't know if any of you, sometimes you throw things, break things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dishes. I can, <laughs> because yes. of the, the anger, I have right. to let it go. Right. And so that's, yeah. that's, <clears throat> that's like exercise. Well, if I'm angry, I'll jump on my bike. Yeah. Well, that's and, what we're going to talk about next. What you do when things are breaking down. And I think you've said a good one. Get on your bike and ride, ride, ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what are some others? Yeah. Well, I don't, for, for myself, I, Look at other people and wonder what how they're feeling. Um, you look at under other people and wonder and, how they're feeling. And think that they're not doing so well. You but think, I, don't, I wouldn't say that to them. But you but you look at other people and say they're not doing so great. In my mind, but yes. when I should say, hey, you, you know, yeah, you yeah. need a hug or yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're uh, not reaching out to people. Yeah, interaction is the key to humankind. Yeah, yeah. Either um, I find looking at my calendar or either making a list of things to look forward to. I mean, it's hard to um, take yourself out if you look at all the things that you have to look forward to. So, uh, so you're future. talking about the tools now. You're talking about which are the wellness tools. Oh, I thought because he, he said something about the bicycle. Or yeah, you say you didn't see any <laughs> brightness in the future. Yeah, yeah. No. So that's so, a good sign. So. And yeah. So maybe we should switch over to the tools. What mm-hmm. are the things? What are the things that you can do? And this is this is really important because what you don't want to do is to get into a crisis, mm-hmm. because when you get into a crisis, other people take over for you. They maybe do things to you that you don't want. You know, if somebody calls the police, they carry you off. That might be really traumatic. You don't know what's going to happen. You, you you get go to they take you to a psych hospital they take you to jail you could take control go, of your finances they take control of your finances mm-hmm. and so you really want to have a good plan so that it, this doesn't get out of control so you said you're going to get on your bike and you're going to ride like one of my kids used to ride for 30 or 40 miles one time he rode to Connecticut it was 125 miles wow and it was great for him it was did great. he have to call to tell you, say Come and get me, or did he ride back? He rode back. Oh, okay. so, but he was eighteen. You know, you can do I that. lost my license when I was forty-seven, and and I had to go to work twenty-five miles at Mount Snow. So how'd you do it? I rode my bike. You rode your bike eighteen times. Right. So for a month. For a month. I mean, I got so it is possible. Absolutely, yeah. for a forty-seven-year-old fat guy. Come on. You <laughs> how much weight did you lose? <laughs> A little bit, not much. <laughs> so but. riding your bike is a huge wellness tool. What What are the things that we're going to do to keep us out of situations like that? Like- it's meeting the problem head on instead of we all try to avoid things. So meeting the problem we, head on? Uh, we might ignore it. Okay. So we know we, what we need to do and we don't do it. So what is it that you need to do? You, what, what are the things that are going to help? One is riding your bike. What else? Get up and breathe in the morning. Have your cup of coffee. Have your green tea. Yeah, go out and smell the air. Mm-hmm. Listen to the kids talking, yelling, going to school. Know that you're part of the world. Are there, are there any things that you would want to be avoiding? Toxic people. Toxic people. People, people, people Which is tough to figure out. <laughs> hmm? Who's toxic and who is not? Well, no, not for me. Toxic people are people that, you know, if you're around them, that you come away and you don't feel right in your stomach, you know, that, you know, that you don't enjoy their company, that it's a pain and you don't look forward to them, you dread them, you know, it's, yeah, you know, 
Those, so I, those, what I, that is, those are the people that I consider to be toxic. Now, whether it's me or them, that's another question. But I know that I don't feel right around. Um, you know, some people make it a habit of making you feel uncomfortable. Yes, because they don't. They they're judgmental. They. Yeah, so you stay, oh, that's how they feel better. So you makes stay, stay away from feel better. Okay, are there, are there other things you would want to avoid? Sure. For me, when things are breaking down, might be a time when addictive kinds of patterns might be. I might be susceptible to them, so I might avoid uh, substances or alcohol. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So avoiding alcohol, avoiding certain substances. Sure. And sugar. For me, sugar would be sugar. big. Yeah. Yeah. I need to like. No cake, no, you know, I, I shouldn't go in a bakery when I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes wellness comes from eating a nice blueberry muffin. Right, but I think that's lower down on the list when you're, mm -hmm. well, for me, it would right. be like when I'm just not feeling so great. Maybe I've had a rough time, but when I'm this bad, I don't think I should eat a lot of sugar. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. so, Which is but, different. For, it is different for all of us. It's absolutely, absolutely. And I, sh you know, avoiding substances, I think, is huge for a lot of people. And a lot of people are using avoiding substances um, to get th to get to get themselves Better. well. Yeah, using this whole plan. Mm -hmm. And we've got crisis crises in this country, and I think around the world with people using substances, using really dangerous, dangerous substances, and and. This is where this would come in. So, so, mm -hmm. so you would want to be avoiding them. But as you're avoiding them, what else do you need to do? Well, to you know, you can't just avoid them. For me, sometimes having someone else to help me figure stuff out, like doing some something like exchange listening, or um, you know, if if going to a therapist, you know, writing down the things you want to talk to with your therapist about. So that they help you figure out, you know, you know, why are you feeling this way? Are there any things that are environmentally around that might be causing it? You know, or is the anniversary of something? Or just having sometimes to have to talk to someone else to kind of figure it out. Yvonne just mentioned exchange listening, and some of you mm -hmm. might not know what that is, but it's it's a something that has been people have devised where you get together with another person for an hour and or for however long you want. You could say two hours, you could say half an hour. Half the time one person just gets to talk, they can rant, they can rave, they don't say anything bad about the other person, but they can just fuss. They can whine, they can vent. vent. Mm -hmm. And then the other half of the time is for the other person to vent. And what they've found, sometimes people will say, well, I'm not having such a bad time, so you take the whole time. And that doesn't seem to work. It seems to work better if each person mm -hmm. has half the time. Usually people do it for an hour, and half is one person and Which half. Which is a long time to take out of your day. Yeah, so if so if only that's really 10 is. minutes, you can go five minutes each. Yeah. But if you're in this place, you might want to take the hour. Right. I mean, some people have done it for hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that they were having really bad... Uh, extreme uh, mental health symptoms, mm -hmm. and they did it for hours and hours and hours, and they did their talking, and then the other person did their talking. And in the past, they'd always been hospitalized a lot, and now they weren't being hospitalized anymore. Without mm -hmm. criticism or anything. Without no criticism. No, that's the thing. No, that's no criticism, no interrupting. This just person being just, heard. Just, just no criticism. Some people don't believe, they yeah. don't not even think about the fact that maybe your mind's working in a way yes. where yeah. Yeah. you, you know, our brains are what? We use like 10, 15% of them. Right. You know, so I don't think enough of us realize that everybody's going through something every right. day. Right. So to um, just be quiet for that. Just be quiet and sit there and say, yep, I hear what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And not, not, not give them friend. advice. Do you? You yes. have a friend like well, that? Well, Kelly and I do this pretty well, but my buddy that I work at the cemetery with, you know, Great. we've both struggled with addiction. Mm -hmm. um, and what he was saying is like we turn to that. Right. Uh, to get out of the reality of the world. Yeah, that's great. So... You know, we all have our demons. Right, right. So, um, 
one way to deal so with them. Trying to figure out what they are is a tough yeah. thing, but getting someone to actually realize what you're going through is even tougher. Yeah, but if you have this kind of exchange listening, it can really work. Right. Being so, able to talk to somebody. Yeah. Or seeking out other groups like uh, support groups. Support groups. Like we have depression. Ryan, we have depression support groups. Uh, you know, some other people might seek out some of the groups that they might be have more things in common right. with. Sometimes, sometimes there's alcohol addiction groups or sometimes alcohol synonymous, depending on what people want to do. And mm -hmm. are narcotics, is that what they call narcotics anonymous these days? And some other groups like that. Um, so there's, there's groups that people, you know, if people want to go. My son had surgery. He was crying the more after the surgery so he, because he, was, he was worrying about taking oxycotton for the pain, which he had right pain. Right. And I said, "You're not going to become." The, I mean, our the the news. What you're saying is that we get. So much information told mm -hmm. to us, and lots of people believe that stuff. You have to make your own opinion, of course, but right. you and know, then, psychology is what it is. Or you might have to get more informed information exactly. that people do get addicted to Oxycontin, but mm -hmm. if you're only going to take it for a few days, so you need to have more information you know, plan might be to get more information from the physician. So, so that would be in this get more information. Mm -hmm. Get more information Absolutely. from the information. from the doctor about how long it takes for you to get addicted, so that you. Oh, is there other are there other things that you can take for the pain? I have uh, arthritis pain, and I told the uh, orthopedic doctor that I didn't want to take any painkillers, but he gave me an anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that helps. This so is what I have a lot of can for a shoulder. Oh, I have to take and the very same thing. <laughs> does it work? So, uh, yeah. Sometimes I feel like it does. I mean, when your so, your movement, you know. Some other ideas. What el What are the other things? This is such an important time mm. um, when things are breaking down. This is really important. What, like for me, if I go and actually did this the other day, you know went on a long, long, long hike. I went mm. on such a long hike that I had a lot of pain in my legs when I got back, but I was my head was a lot better. Your yeah, heart so, was stronger, too. Yeah, right. So <laughs> what are some of the things? Uh, for me, I'd seek for people to, people to be with. People to be with. Yes. yes. And even though just being with them, don't talk much, and that's fine, just to, with other people who can understand or embrace and give me hugs and... That is really fantastic, I yes. felt, yes. especially yes. in this crisis, you know. Yes, yes. Taking someone's hand, opening yeah. the door, being yes. nice to mm -hmm. someone can give you so much satisfaction right. that you're like, hmm, yes. you help someone's day, you know, helping someone with their groceries to get to the car or... Yeah, or, being, you know, being, uh, being creative because sometimes... Okay, so helping so, somebody out... Mm -hmm. And being being creative, because some people will say, or I may have periods of time where there's nobody for me to call. Everybody else is busy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, drawing. I or, think that that's, if you, let's say a little bit more about that drawing. What are the other things that you do creatively? That uh, other things like it would be, uh, like I said, like cooking is creative, too. Yes. Uh, Especially the final part. The final <laughs> product, <laughs> eating it. <laughs> but like anything uh, creative, like uh, crocheting. Mm -hmm. I know um, uh, recently I went to a class and we're doing crochet. I hadn't done it since I was a child. And I was surprised that what my grandmother had taught me, I, I knew how to, how to do that. But it it's kind of a quietness mm -hmm. uh, that's there when you... Mm -hmm are uh, doing something with your hands um, mm -hmm. um, so that you're doing that. And even, I don't draw that well, but it's sort of like, almost like, it's not quite like meditation, but it's sort of like, like I said, things that you can get lost in. So any kind of crafts and 
almost any place they'll have uh, a Michael store or either the Walmart might have, might have a section with something that it, I know you're laughing. It, I'm it, not laughing. I'm smiling. With you. <laughs> I am not laughing because Michael's is the art, the art that you're saying. You know, they have, have coloring books. They have coloring books now yeah. for adults. Right. That's and I've right. had. Right. Uh, I got I got a couple of them at the dollar store myself, and because they only cost a dollar piece, and then you can get the markers. They only cost a dollar too. And I don't know what it is about repeating doing something like that. It's, um, or well, Mary Ellen, one time I went to a retreat that you had, but yes. it did Zentangles. Yes, we did so, Zentangles. So, so even if you're not artistic, there's always something that you can do, and you're, it quiets the mind. I don't know what it is, but you're just, you're doing something. Everybody can be creative in some way. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. When things are falling apart, I find that, um, allocating time toward building a positive habit really is really helpful. Like oh, yeah. what kind of a positive habit? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I may run for just 10 minutes. Okay. And, and that exercise can be remi I'm a reminder that, oh yeah, I could try yoga. Mm -hmm. I could take a longer hike. Mm -hmm. I could call a friend mm -hmm. and get outside. Mm -hmm. Um, and that helps to remind me about the basics that are often forgotten when things are falling apart. Mm -hmm. Yes, and like, so for Kelly, bought a new house, and mm -hmm. we've been painting and doing, but so, finishing it, you know, all right, I'm going to finish the bathroom today. Right. Um, and then when you do it, you look like she painted all the cabinets, and then she put all the hardware and even if it's imperfect, it doesn't matter. You did it. Right, right. You know, and to be, it, to finish a project, start a project, finish a project. Mm -hmm. It's a tough thing to do for all of us, I think. We're procrastinators by nature, I believe. I don't know. It, it reminds me of a silly thing that I read, an, I read an article in a magazine, and it was about these women who are old, older than me even, that um, take on these great physical, um, but they, they, they try to take on some big physical accomplishment. And there was one woman, and she really was 82, and she got into pole vaulting. And so, so I decided maybe I should get into pole vaulting. So, so I thought about you have a big pole, big and you run with the big pole, and then you swing you way up in the air and come down. You go way up 20 feet Which I always and come wanted down. to do. But you break your neck, huh? You could, so I thought a lot about pole vaulting, and Ed said he found a big stick up in the woods. Maybe I could use it. But first I said maybe I just should start by running a few, you know, a few feet, and I tried that. I got that far anyway with it. But it was just fun. Have you yeah. ever watched someone do that, like yes. up close? Yes. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. It yes. really is. So, it, but it was just, it was good. It got me out of my awful space that I was in and got me thinking of something. I don't really think I'll ever be a pole vaulter, but it was fun to think of anyway. Mm. So Kelly and I went zip lining. Which zip lining you, would be good. What's zip lining? Zip lining would be great. So you, in Charlemont, Mass., you get you pay. I mean, it costs a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and then you get hooked up into like a harness, and then you go through the woods on a way up uh, high, like flying through the air, flying it's, through the air way up really, high. It's mm -hmm. like on a clothesline. Uh, one of the funnest times I've ever had, and I've jumped off of eighty foot cliffs into water, and but for Kel <laughs> to do this, right? And like I said, her daughter took her own life. Uh, so for her to do something like that, which she didn't think she could do, mm -hmm. it's that's another thing is doing something that you don't think you can actually doing do. Doing something that you don't think you can actually do. Yes. So, so maybe I should give up on my pole vault. <laughs> well, that's a tough point. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm trying something new, I commit to do something badly because I know that I judge myself pretty harshly right. sometimes. And actually, just the doing of it will will be um, really beneficial, yeah. and it doesn't end up going badly yeah. most often. Mm -hmm. So this was great. I hope you all got some good ideas about when things have gotten really at a very difficult place that you can work yourself out of them. There's, there's mm -hmm. the, the ideas for working yourself out of them are almost endless. Mm -hmm.